Top story of the day, federal hate crimes conviction. The murderers of Ahmaud Arbery facing justice. Now there's still more justice to go. I had an exclusive interview this morning with the father of Ahmaud Arbery, Marcus Arbery, as he was literally standing outside of the courtroom waiting for the jury to deliver the verdict for these hate crimes. Here's some of that interview. Now this is the federal hate crimes prosecution of it. We're waiting on the verdict. What are your thoughts so far? Uh, we just know Ahmad was killed because he was a black man. And those Mike Michaels and that Bryant were real racist. All the evidence show all that. And all the evidence show why they target him because he was a black man. Because you can have white people in the neighborhood had stuff to break law with and steal stuff with. Bags and all that stuff they had talking with them and they never pursued and bothered them. Ahmad just had his jogging stuff on, no tool, no bravery tool, no nothing. And that showed that why they targeted him just because he was a black man. You know, one thing that comes out during a federal hate crimes prosecution is the context of their hate for a particular race. So in this trial, evidence has been exposed. <laughs> A lot of evidence was exposed, evidence of their racism. That's one of the things about a federal hate crimes prosecution is that you can bring in evidence that the state was unable to do so based on their theory of the prosecution and theory of the motive. Now, what we have found out is that the McMichaels not only were racist against Mr. Maude Aubrey, they were racist against basically every black person they have encountered from people they called associates to coworkers, colleagues, etc. Their racism was extreme. And their racism led to the criminal attack and murder against the Mont Aubrey. Now, the father, Marcus Aubrey, also highlighted the reality of more who should be prosecuted in that interview. Here it is. County police board. They kept the Mike Mike of them trash brushed under the road for many years. You know, Jackie Johnson tied up in all that stuff too. That That's racist right. stuff too. And yep. She she's been indicted. Yes, we got to clean it all up, and you yep. know you got to you got to you got to sit back and look at look at that video. That kind of police that, that that daddy he was just so corrupt and racist. He had the kind of police on his well. He tried to throw them off so they wouldn't do their best get some thoroughly. That's why the feds had to come in. The GBI I had to come in and take over this case. Marcus Aubrey, the father of Ahmad Aubrey, laid it out plain. In plain language, the reality of the McMichaels and Bryan is this. They coexisted in a systemic structure that not only permitted but protected their criminality. And he alluded to the fact that they have been protecting these particular men and men like them for years. He cited the name D.A. Jackie Robinson. And I want to bring your attention, Jackie Johnson, excuse me. I want to bring your attention to Jackie Johnson in just a moment because there's another relay that has to happen here for ultimate justice to be had. Let's put up the picture of the killers again, these murderers and our brother Ahmad Aubrey who was slain by those men because of those men's hate. The mother had to speak outside of the courthouse after the verdict. Now, she had to remind the government of how they mishandled this from Day one. Now the government was supposed to be on their side, right? The prosecution was prosecuting the killers of their son. They're supposed to be working together to seek justice for Maude Aubrey. She reminded some folks of a few things. Let's put up her picture. She's a pillar of strength, a remarkable woman. That family has had to go to every single hearing, every single motion. And they've been doing it since the beginning. Speaking outside of the courthouse after the verdict was announced, Wanda Cooper Jones, mother of Ahmaud Arbery, called out the US Department of Justice for originally agreeing to accept a plea deal from her son's killers in federal court. Remember that? So now watch the systemic situation from the beginning of this. One, she was failed by the DA. Two, failed by the county. Three, she was then failed by the prosecutors who said they would help. It gets deeper. She said, and I quote, I 
now want to address the members of the DOJ. I'm very thankful that you guys brought these charges of hate, of hate crime. But back, but back in January 31, you guys accepted a plea deal with these three murderers who took my son's life. She continued, Marcus, the father of Ahmad Aubrey, and two of Ahmad's aunts stood before the courts and begged the judge not to take the plea deal. That the DOJ, that the DOJ went before the judge and asked them to take the plea deal with these guys. Cooper Jones said that she spoke to DOJ prosecutors and begged them to not take the plea deal in the case. She said, and I quote, they ignored my cry. I begged them, even after the family stood before the judge and asked them, asked the judge to not take this plea deal. The lead prosecutor, Tara Lyons, stood up and asked the judge to ignore the family's cry. That's not justice for Ahmad. Now I gotta remind everyone, over 90% of federal judges accept the plea deals that are offered to them by prosecutors. If it had not been for the scrutiny of this trial, for the reality of leaders, people like yourself and others being involved in this case, and the family being dogmatic about justice, full justice for Ahmad Aubrey, this federal judge would have likely taken that plea deal. It shouldn't be this hard for black folks to get simple justice in the United States of America. Now, let me tell you another criminal that needs to be locked up for life, the DA. Let's put a picture up, that's a mug shot. Now, her name is Jackie Johnson, former district attorney of the Glenn County District Circuit. The Crips and Bloods ain't got nothing on her. That's the real gangster, you're looking at her, okay? Ex Glenn County DA. Jackie Johnson turned herself in. This was at the Glenn County Sheriff's Office. Reports the Atlanta Journal Constitution. This is when it happened after a grand jury returned an indictment on counts of obstruction and violations of oath of office by public officer. Johnson was released from the Glenn County Detention Center on a $10,000 bond. The paper reports state prosecutors alleged that she used her position to delay arrest of the white man who chased and killed the 25 year old Aubrey. Now I want to remind everyone of this, the way she is being prosecuted, they're being light with her. They don't want to let you know that not only did she delay the arrest, she tried to cover up the murder. That's a different charge. They don't want her to be they don't want her to be charged with conspiracy after the fact. They don't want her to be charged with aiding and abetting. They don't want you to even think about those charges. They want you to think this woman only violated her oath of office to the degree of just delaying the arrest. This was not a delayed arrest. This was literally an attempt to cover up a murder. And when we did some digging, we found that she did it before. In another case involving a woman who was killed by the local police and she covered up for them as well. And the jury, the grand jury who decided not to indict the cops who killed this woman under her jurisdiction said the DA lied to them about the evidence. If it had not been for a Jackie Johnson as DA, I submit to you, I don't think the McMichaels would have been emboldened to do what they did. She's just as much guilty for the murder of Ahmaud Arbery. Johnson was the county's top prosecutor when Ahmaud Arbery was fatally shot last year. The one uh, and one of the armed men who pursued him had worked for her as an investigator. The Georgia Attorney General Chris Carr, who's a Republican, sought the indictment after requesting an investigation of possible misconduct by local prosecutors who failed to bring charges in this killing. You see, we keep talking reform and the truth is we need replacement. The laws are on the books to properly enforce, but if the powers that be choose not to properly enforce them, infraction means nothing without enforcement. Culture eats policy alive every day of the week. Jank, what are your thoughts, brother? Yeah, so. Clearly two very disparate thoughts here, just the same way that you viewed it. On the one hand, we got a conviction today and that is a great cause to celebrate and we got a little bit of justice. And so, I mean, it makes me wanna play this old friend.
Ladies and gentlemen, we got him. And so uh, great to see these guys get convicted again. Um, but uh, I was gonna say the same thing about Jackie Johnson and I have in, in previous shows. Um, without the cover of the law protecting them, which is exactly how it was during the Jim Crow days and, right. uh, and, and uh, after the Civil War, um, they could not do the terror and they would not assume that they would get away with the terror. And Jackie Johnson clearly tried to cover up this crime. That's accomplished after the fact. And, and the fact that she was the DA doesn't make that better, it makes it worse. So it's one thing when you, you, your accomplice helps you after a, a murder, get rid of the body. It's another thing when your accomplice is the DA and she says, "Oh no, don't worry, you'll never be punished, there'll never be any consequences. Not only does that prevent justice in that case, and it would have if it weren't for all of you guys, which I'm gonna get back to in a second. But on top of that, it's a green light to do it again. Right. And not just for the McMichaels, but for everybody who knows Jackie Johnson. Oh, you you make a black man disappear in this county, you're gonna you have a free pass, okay? And and this is a great example of it, because this it doesn't get any more egregious in this case. So they chase him down, as you all know, right? And he's jogging in the neighborhood, and then they sh shoot him down for no reason in the middle of the day, because there's a black man in their neighborhood and they won't have it, and so they. They murder him, it's an old school lynching. And she looked at that and thought, boy," And she told the cops not to pursue. Well, what does that tell you? That's not an honest mistake, nobody makes an honest mistake like that. That's right. Right, this is not a close case. Oh Well, you know what, I knew these cops and they shot a little early and the guy had a gun, they probably shouldn't have shot, no, nothing like that, nothing, nothing, nothing to justify it other than, oh, you killed a black man, congratulations. I'll help you cover it up. So she should see significant time in jail. Uh, yeah. And uh, and look, I say you guys because to, to echo what Rashad was saying earlier, without public spotlight, they would have gotten away with it. No question. Right. Jackie would have uh, Johnson would have covered it up, and and it never would have risen back up. She, she had it buried. It was over. But now. Uh, because we were able to put public pressure on, because of one of the idiots taped a part of it and it and it leaked, and whoever leaked it, by the way, is a hero. Uh, and and because all of us were outraged, both the shows and the audience, and said, no, 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 not on our watch. These are not the old days. We're not going to let you get away with it. And what the right wing do the whole time? Oh, oh, they're just complaining, you know, the whole time. And in this case, and Rashad, in every other case, right? Oh, they're just complaining. The racism doesn't actually exist. Well, Ahmed Arbery's dead, so I'm pretty sure it exists. So, right. and then one more thing. Uh, as I was looking at it, Rashad, I saw that they had public defenders, right? Now they were convicted. Uh, Rittenhouse was acquitted. Uh, Rittenhouse didn't have public defenders. The right wing had raised millions of dollars for his defense. And as everybody knows, when you when you're rich and you got big lawyers, you have a much much better chance of getting off, no matter what happened. Those, those are two different cases, two different fact patterns, and and the jury made their decisions in both. But those millions of dollars the right wing uh, got to Rittenhouse made all the difference. Yeah, yeah. And listen, I can't neglect the reality of. The fact that the DA at the time who engaged in the cover up has now been indicted. The DA should be held to a higher standard of responsibility. And here's what we've accepted, Jank. We've accepted that medical doctors should be held to a higher standard of care or higher standard of responsibility. We've accepted that psychiatrists should be held to a higher standard of responsibility, school teachers, professors, and others. But somewhere, we started to believe that law enforcement should be held to a lower standard of responsibility. There has to be a point, brother, where we start making examples out of those who violate the public trust and shock the conscience of America. And until we start doing that, you will continue to see the inequity of our justice system played out when it comes to prosecutions like this. This one we caught, we caught in time publicly. 
But there are prosecutions like this that should be happening all across America. And don't believe for a minute that this was the DA's first time covering up anything. And those would never come to the light, unfortunately. Thanks for watching The Young Turks, really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR. So those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.